A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, way come back. <sighs> um, it's mathematics time yet again. And it's a variation of the problem I presented a few days ago, like, like two weeks or something, with the title Ukrainian Mathematics Olympiad is Wild. Someone in the comments mentioned that there is an old IMO long list problem that is pretty similar to this one and we're going to solve it today. Um, I think it, it looks pretty cool. Okay, it's, it's probably a very familiar procedure to solve something of that sort. If you want to have the other video for reference, the link is down there in the description. And it's an improvised session, so um, I'm fairly certain that I can solve this one on camera first time around, so let's give it a shot. By the way, have you watched my newest video over on Flemish Wood? It's a good one, a new creation, a cutting board. You can also purchase it on stemmerch.eu now. Links down there in the description. Please make sure to watch the video. It would mean a lot to me um, to get some watch time and recognition in the YouTube algorithm. And now we are going to dive right in. So I am a long list. If I'm not mistaken, this is the list of problems that will basically be um, in the pot, you could say, of problems that could most probably get into the IMO at some point. There's also the so-called shortlist. I think this is like the um, second qualification. After a problem gets out of the long list, it gets into the shortlist and then it will be decided if it lands in the IMO. Sadly, um, OP didn't say from which year it was from, etc. So if you guys know which year this was from and which country the IMO long list was from, please make sure to let me know down there in the comments. Now, um, if I were to solve something like this, I would at first decompose it. Um, thing is, all of these have factors of two and three somehow scrambled in here. So let's write it out. So four in its prime factorization is two times two to the x power plus then we have six its prime factorization is two times three to the x power is equal to and none is perfect square three times three and all of this to the x power and now we can probably most likely turn this into a polynomial once again of degree three or something no seems like degree two if i were to so dividing through by this then we get 2 over 3 here, then we get 1 here, and 3 divided by 2 here. This wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. So I'm not going to divide through by this. I'm probably going to divide through by this under the condition that it's not equal to 0. It's not. 4 to the x power can never be equal to 0 unless you take it in the limit. Um, so let's divide both sides by 4 to the x power resulting overall in one obviously plus. Then we are going to get um, two times three divided by two times two and all of this to the x power, that's just regular exponentiation rule, being equal to um, three times three divided by two times two to the x power. And yeah, this is pretty good. Two and two is going to cancel out, giving us three over two to the x power. And this right here is three over two squared to the x power. Yeah, this is nice. And now we got a polynomial in three over two to the x power because by exponentiation rules, we can turn this into three over two to the two x power and then we can track the square to the outside, turning this into um, three over two to the x power and the whole thing squared. Meaning if we now say, let, um, what is a Greek letter that no one uses? <laughs> Capital row, I think. No one uses capital row for, <laughs> for mathematics or the like because it just looks like a P. So let capital row be equal to um, 3 over 2 to the x power. This way we are going to get a polynomial, namely 1 plus, here we have 3 over 2 to the x power, which is nothing other than row, is equal to, and this right here is row squared. Yeah, and now we can just start solving a polynomial. This time it's only a second degree polynomial, not a third degree polynomial. 
Um, this makes matters a bit easier, so the casework you could say. Um, we are just going to, well, subtract p and 1 on both sides, giving us p squared minus p minus 1. No, not p, it's rho. See, this is why no one uses capital rho, because it's just confusing as frick. It's equal to zero, and this is just a quadratic in capital rho, not p, okay? This is capital rho, not chan giving us um, two solutions for rho, one and two being equal to, um, we get one half plus or minus the square root of, and then we get one quarter plus one. And one quarter plus one is one quarter plus four over four, which is five over four, giving us two solutions for rho. Namely, the first solution is equal to one plus, and then we get the square root of five divided by two. And the other one, it's just, it's conjugate. This might be familiar to some of you. Okay, this is just a, the generating polynomial, you could say, for the Fibonacci number, for the golden ratio. Um, and the second solution is one minus square root of five divided by two. And this right here is the golden ratio. And this other one right here is the retarded little brother of the golden ratio, which doesn't have a name. We're going to call it the golden ratio conjugate, far conjugate. Um, it, it's a conjugate because of the negative sign and and yeah, you can basically into a field put for, for example square roots, for example the, the rational numbers and you can it, it join square roots to it to get some, some kind of new field. That's an interesting thing in abstract algebra. You should look into this. One thing to note is that square root of 5 is approximately 2. Uh, meaning 1 minus 2 is negative 1 over 2 is negative 1 half, so this right here is less than 0. And this is going to be important in a second, because we have the solutions for our p, and we know what p actually is. No, rho, it's uh, never gonna use this again. Never gonna use you again. Never gonna use you ever again. Um, rho is equal to 3 over 2 to the x power, meaning we can either have the golden ratio is equal to um, 3 over 2 to the x power, or we have the second solution, the retarded little brother of the golden ratio is equal to 3 over 2 to the x power. Now, to solve for our x, what we need to do is, there, there are two ways once again, we can either take the logarithm base 3 over 2, or we can make use of the natural logarithm. No matter what it is you do, the logarithm is only defined in real numbers with, um, with positive arguments, meaning this solution right here can be cancelled. We are not looking for, um, for complex solutions, only for the real solutions, meaning here, um, I, I'm going to take two routes. The first route is um, we're going to apply the natural log on both sides. So natural log of far is equal to, and by the logarithm rules, we have natural log of 3 over 2 to the x power. We can drag the x to the front. x times the natural log of 3 over 2. And dividing through by log of 3 over 2 gives us the solution for x being equal to the log of far divided by the log of 3 over 2. And yeah, this is like the same result before, even with the generalization on the last video, even though we ended up with a second degree polynomial instead of a third degree polynomial this time to solve. Um, yeah, log of three over two is the same as log of three minus log of two. So this is also something you can quite possibly do. Okay, turn this into this expression but I don't think um, someone cares. As mentioned before, you can also apply the log base 3 over 2 to it. So by using the change of base formula, which is just this right here, we can also rewrite x as being the log of base 3 over 2 of the golden ratio far. Yeah, because um, log base 3 over 2 of 3 over 2 is going to cancel out to being just one. Yeah, those are our two solutions, basically. This one right here, or this one, I mean, really doesn't matter. It's just one solution, just in different um, logarithmic forms represented. And yeah, it was as easy as I thought it would be. But I hope you still did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you're interested in more calculus, algebra, solving polynomials, more golden ratio and the like, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor brand, who are kind of the sponsor yet in our video here on this channel. Now, speaking of the golden ratio, you probably heard about all the nice visualizations that you can do with the golden ratio. 
the golden spiral and many other things like that. And if you are interested in graphics, visualizations of mathematical topics, then Preint might be the perfect fit for you. Preint is an online learning platform and app with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry. No matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Preint definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And as mentioned before, Preint is just perfect. It's using visualizations to make a topic more clear to the user. Preint is the only website I have found thus far which can bring knowledge across so playfully in such a manner. It's seriously unique and I have never seen it before on any other website on the internet. An example, just take a look at their geometry courses. It's one of my most favorite examples. This right here. Here you can see a triangle being dragged by the user on Preint on the corners. What does it tell you? If you vary the angles of a triangle, all the inner angles are still going to add up to 180 degrees. It's a perfect exercise if you just learned something about geometry and you are new to the field. Maybe you didn't understand the proof that your teacher gave you with constructing parallel sides and then cutting, cutting the triangle up and putting all the corners together. Maybe this is a way you could enjoy and learn it more thoroughly. And this is not the only instance where Preant does this. Preant is this kind of interactive learning experience all over the whole website. You are going to be presented with such nice graphics and things you can play around with. And if this feels like it's something for you, why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preant.org slash flammablemass. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Preant already, which is great. But more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they actually have available on the website already and how much content they add on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And what else can I say? I thank you guys for watching. I'm seeing you on the next <laughs> contest mathematics video. I just have fun creating those in the last time, even if they are not too hard or like, but they are fun to present and they actually get some views into the channel. So I'm totally fine with that. Also make sure to check out Flemmy's Wood, my woodworking channel and stemwitch.eu. And also I recently released my mobile game work. Wakudesu or Jotaru Des, did you talk about Wakudesu? Yeah, everyone plays Wak these days. 300 million users um, two weeks after release. It's, it's amazing. You should definitely check it out. I'm Shakespeare.